Hey there, everybody. It's Sunday, so that means it's time for another edition of Storytime. Uh, sorry I missed last week, but I uh, just wasn't able to get to it because things get really, really busy around here. Uh, this week, I have a very, very special guest with us. I have a blue-tongued skink named Stubbs. And the reason he gets the name Stubbs is he's got tiny, stubby little arms, and he's also missing a few fingers, which is honestly kind of normal for blue-tongued skinks. You see, skinks shed just like any other reptile does, but because their scales are so tightly wound, sometimes the uh, excess scales get wrapped around the fingers and can cut off the circulation, eventually leading into the toes falling off. This is actually a pretty common thing. With wild ones, it's seen very often. Even in captive bred ones, we will see some of the toes missing. The stubby arms, however, they're just bored with those. They're always gonna have stubby arms, which gives him his name Stubbs. Now, blue tongue skinks are very, very interesting lizards because they use their tongue as part of their defense mechanism. When they stick out that tongue and flash it to you, it's meant as a warning sign. So they can still smell with their tongue, like a lot of lizards do, but if he opens his mouth and that tongue sticks out and he flattens it out wide and sticks it out as far as he can, that's saying you need to back off. The inside of his mouth is all darker colored, and then he's got that big blue tongue. So out in the wild, if an animal were to try to threaten him, he would actually open up his mouth as big as he could, try to make some noise, and flatten his tongue out, and actually run after the animal to try to scare them. That's how blue tongue skinks defend themselves. The rest just has to do with the fact that their plating on their skin, their scales, is very, very thick and overlapped. This is because they spend a lot of time living underneath debris um, and going underground, and that helps protect them. It stops all that debris and excess stuff from getting under their scales. Even their ears are built with a flap over top of it to stop excess dirt from getting inside there. Now, sometimes this can lead to issues because stuck shed can actually build up inside the ears and start to cause equilibrium problems. So if that's the case, you gotta look inside there every once in a while, if there's some excess skin, take a pair of tweezers and take the old skin out. Now, these guys are native to Australia and New Guinea. Um, there's a couple different species of them. Uh, there's an inland and there's a coastal, which usually there's just a size difference between them um, and a little bit of a colorization difference as well. Uh, but being that they are a highly captive bred animal now, there's actually dozens of different color morphs and patterns to them. This one right here is just kind of a standard blue tongue skink, um, which is pretty big too. They can get almost two feet long and you can see he is a pretty long lizard but also a very, very relaxed lizard. Um, now they are an omnivore, so they'll eat just about anything that they can find out in the wild. They love fruits and veggies, uh, they'll eat insects, they'll even eat smaller reptiles. One of their favorite things to eat though is snails. And although they don't have very well-developed teeth, they have an extremely powerful jaw. You can kind of see by the head shape there with how wide it is right there that there's a lot of muscle in there. So they can actually snap snail shells in one bite. So even though the teeth aren't like super great at doing it, the jaw power can create quite a bite on there. Um, so although there's a lot of cool features on him, there's one that we can't see because he's alive and that's his skull. They actually have a skull with a lot of patterning on it that mimics the type of hard scaling that they have over top here. And so that fits in really well with the book we have this week. We have Skulls by Blair Thornburr and Scott Campbell. So. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna read our book called Skulls with Stubbs, our blue tongue skink friend. All right. You probably don't think much about skulls. But every head of every person you've ever seen has a skull inside. This is a good thing. Oh, I can get the pages. Skulls take a while to grow strong and hard, but it's time well spent. Skulls are safe and snug like a car seat for your brain. Skulls give your face a good shape, 
Skulls let your jaw snap. Skulls hold your teeth in place until they don't. Skulls have holes in them for sounds, for light, for air, for grilled cheese sandwiches. Skulls don't have noses, but skulls don't really need noses. They're more of a cartilage thing. But most important of all, skulls are not trying to be scary. They can't help the way they look. They just do their job and no one says thank you. And some people are even afraid of them. But not you, not you at all. You love having a safe place to keep your brain. You snap your jaws with gusto and you love having teeth in your mouth. Until, of course, you lose them. You love having holes for hearing, for seeing, for smelling and breathing, and for eating grilled cheese sandwiches. So tell your friends, nice skull, it gives your face a good shape. Tell your family, thanks for helping my skull grow strong and hard. Shout to the world, I love my skull. Take care of your skull because you only get one. And think of how amazing it is to have such good bones in your body. The end. This is one of the more fun books I think I've read in a while. Um, as you guys know, I actually don't read my books ahead of time because I like being just as surprised as the audience. And I picked this one because I like skulls and I loved the artwork on it. And this actually became a really, really interesting and educational book about although we see skulls as a scary thing, especially associated with things like Halloween and death, skulls are a good thing. So that being said, I really hope you enjoyed the book Skulls. And I also hope you enjoyed learning about Stubbs, our blue tongue skink friend. We'll see you guys next week.